Hi everyone, my name is Steph. Welcome back to my home. Today I have something a little bit different for you. I'm doing a get ready with me chit chat about gaming while queer or gaming as a woman. There's a lot of discussion in this video about my experiences as a queer person and as a woman in the gaming industry, both as a professional and as a gamer. And what I hope is that even if you're not super into gaming, you can still watch this video and learn about gaming, but also learn about this look. Okay. And specifically, if you're not interested in gaming, I would like you to watch this video because it's for you. There are so many women and queer people out there that are against gaming or don't want to get into gaming because of preconceived notions that they have about what the gaming world is or what the gaming community is. And these don't come out of nowhere. These come out of lived experience and witnessing what gaming culture was and has been over the years. And it's not been very welcoming to women or queer people. So if you are one of those people that feels like I don't even want to touch it, like that's a that's a bomb about to go off, or if maybe you don't see the value in gaming, I want you to watch this video. It might teach you something and it might make you feel a certain type of way and you might be like, mm, maybe I can do that. The look today is actually inspired by something very interesting that Xbox and OPI did together. They made this beautiful limited edition controller and I don't know if you can tell, but my nails match it perfectly. Xbox and OPI made a limited edition nail polish collection. They did one of these last year in 2022. This is the summer 2023 collection. You don't often see things like nail polish collabs with gaming companies. So when stuff like this happens, I really wanna get excited about it. I think it's so much fun. And I think this is a beautiful controller as well. The nail polishes from OPI are named, there's this green on my pinky. It is called Summer Monday Fridays. And then there's the blue and it is called Surf Nail naked. Ooh. Then there is this deeper orangey coral called Flex on the Beach. Ooh. And then there is this more sort of light golden orange. Very cute on my thumbnail. This is sanding in stilettos. We love. You don't see things like this often that are sort of aimed towards or marketed towards female audiences or queer audiences in the gaming world. So when stuff like this happens, a nail polish collab, I think that's awesome. Let's celebrate that. Let's talk about it. So this whole look is inspired directly by this controller, and I actually also use some limited edition cosmetics from um, Elf Cosmetics, who did a collection recently called Game Up. It was all about gaming, so I, I get really excited when I see beauty brands or you know traditional femininity really just reach out and grab gaming because we belong here. That just does so much for visibility and for getting other women and queer folks interested as well in what's going on over here. So I hope you enjoy the video. I will admit. I've had quite an ADHD day today, so I do ramble a little, but all of it comes from a heartfelt and passionate place, especially towards the end. I start talking about some really important things for me. I get a little emotional. I'd love it if you stuck around to see that because it is actually, I think, some very important advice. So enjoy the video. Without further ado, I'm gonna let you get into it and learn how I did this Xbox OPI inspired look. Thank you. To start, I have clipped my hair back and I've gotten myself a coffee because it's one of those days where I'm just not all here. I'm a little crazed. It's just sometimes what happens. But I am determined to film this video, to hang with you, to do some cool stuff. So let's get right into it, okay? What I love to do to start my makeup in the summer is mix my primer. This is the e.l.f. Power Grit Primer with 4% niacinamide. And I like to mix it with this Aven Hydron Tinted Moisturizer. This just gives me like a super dewy base to build on top of with things like concealer. I don't like to wear heavy foundations in the summer if I can avoid it because I'll sweat, okay? And if you sweat off a heavy foundation, you're gonna see. You're gonna see that, okay? Hmm. Magnifique. Look at the glow. To mix things up, I'm not gonna do what I normally do with concealer. I'm actually gonna use the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. This is more of a liquid. It's a lot thinner than the thick, heavy creams I tend to wear. And I'm gonna apply this quite sparingly. So I'm just gonna do a little swipe in the front of my eye, a little bit at the back here, maybe a little down the middle. And then as well, I'm just gonna apply a little bit across the nose because I'm quite red in these areas. And then I'm going to spot conceal just a little. And then I will blend with my foundation brush. Now let's start chit-chatting, folks. I have been a gamer my entire life, and I've been a woman my entire life, or a girl, uh, even if I didn't know it at a certain point, okay? My experiences with the gaming world have been vast and varied. Not only are my experiences as a woman vast and varied, 
It's my experiences as a queer woman, as a trans woman, that I think are quite revealing as to the state of the world of gaming. So I want to chat with you about my various experiences. So I have been a gamer my entire life. I uh, started when I was very young. My first ever game was probably on the Super Nintendo, Nintendo Super Nintendo. Yeah, it's in the name. And it was probably either like Super Mario Bros or Yoshi's Island, something like that. And I loved those games. And it was so early that like, I didn't know how to play. I couldn't actually play them, but my, my family would put a controller in my hand and it'd be unplugged and they'd tell me I was winning, even though I wasn't. And that was cute, whatever. But then pretty much as soon as I was able to think about what I was doing with these games and actually, you know, participate meaningfully, I never stopped. The next thing I'm using here is the e.l.f. Beauty Wands. These are the Halo Glow Beauty Wands. These are new. There's also a blush and a highlight. The contour shade I use is Fair Light, and I'm just applying that everywhere I would normally apply my contour. My experiences with gaming as a young kid, before I knew I was a girl, before I knew I was trans, my experiences with gaming were universally positive. You know, maybe I went some places on the internet and in games where I shouldn't have been when I was too young, but I never encountered, say, like toxicity, bullying, harassment, even if I was terrible at the game. And this continued up until, you know, even in high school when I thought I was a gay boy. Still gaming was pretty good for me, except then as a, a young queer person, I had, you know, I'd had friends growing up at school that were boys and gaming was one of the things that unified us that we did as a friend group or as just individual like one-on-one -on -one friends. And pretty much as soon as I came out as queer, uh, which they had forced me into, by the way, because they would not shut up about asking me about it. I didn't have anyone to play with anymore. So my individual isolated experience was still positive. I could still go into the games and not encounter harassment. I would encounter hate speech from other people out of left field that wasn't even directed at me. It was just kind of casual community chit chat. Still, for the most part, I could enjoy my games. I just had less people to play with and that was very sad, but I've heard I've heard some of the kids have it a little easier nowadays and I'm happy about that. Moving to the next Halo Glow Beauty wand. This is the blush in the shade Rosé You Slay. Slay what, demons? So gaming became a very isolated, secular, on my own experience after I came out as queer. And then, you know, as I grew older, I moved into adulthood, I moved out. It still was a secular thing that was just mine. I didn't really, in my social circles, you know, which were mostly women and queer people, there wasn't really discussion of gaming. Gaming wasn't something that was cool for that group. It wasn't something that was safe for that group. And that's the thing. There's this awful phenomenon that happens where it's like a person will be, will, will say, you know, there's no women here. Why is there no women here? And then a woman shows up and then somebody says, why are they here? They don't even like this. They're not even interested in this. Women aren't interested in gaming. Women aren't interested in gaming. Queer people aren't interested in gaming. Like I hear this so much, like gaming is a straight cis hat man's thing. And this is not true. And this is the same thing that applies to say like women and queer people in certain industries and jobs and, and in, in interest buckets in general. And the thing is, if a person doesn't feel safe to explore something, they're not going to explore it. So yes, when I was navigating early young adulthood, I still loved gaming. I was still a gamer in my heart, but the people that I was interacting with weren't interested, not because it had nothing to offer them, but because whenever they'd look at it, they would get slurs shouted at them. And it's just like I said, like, yeah, sure. My individual experience in gaming was okay. Like, you know, I would show up and people wouldn't be directly attacking me for being queer because they just received me as male. But then you look in trade chat, for example, a public, any, any lobby chat, any kind of public chat. And in that time period, you would see a lot of people just spewing hateful rhetoric. That's really unfortunate. And that really shaped a lot of people in my generation you know, um, a millennial, I was born in 1995, that really shaped a lot of women and queer people from my generation, our perception of gaming. And if they didn't grow up with it, why would they, why would they put themselves out there in that environment? Why would you wander into a hornet's nest just to have the honey? Do ho hornets don't even make honey, do they? You get the point. It was a good analogy. <laughs> By the way, that was the Halo Glow Beauty wand, the highlight shade. I use Champagne Campaign. Very cute. And I'm just blending that out. Nice. Now we're glowing. Look at that. Gorge. And then let's, let's fast forward to modern day. I transition. I'm a trans woman. I'm still a gamer. Then I meet my, my partner, my long-term partner. We've been together about three years now, Travis. And he always liked gaming a little bit. And I'm like, wow, I like gaming. We chit chat about it. On our first date, he brings me a present and it is such a thoughtfully and beautifully wrapped 
duo of Xbox games. And it is Titanfall 1 and 2. And those are his favorite games. And I, listen, that's the minute, that's the moment I knew that I was going to love this man. I'm getting teary-eyed thinking about it. And it's not just that he bought me video games, okay? It's that he saw my interest and he validated it and he took me seriously. And I was suddenly like, oh my God, like, people can take me seriously about this? Like, I can talk about this? And you might remember if you watched my content years ago that I would try to breach nerd subject matter and it would kind of be like, okay, received. There'd be a few niche people that'd be like, wow, I loved that. Like, please do more of that. But generally it wouldn't really take off very well. And when I was younger, I, I had to go where the success was. I don't know, I just made, I made certain choices at that time. But then when I met Travis, the pandemic happened. Everybody was isolated. I got back into it big time. And that's when I switched over to Twitch and I dropped off of YouTube originally. And it has been a journey for the past two and a half years being in the gaming world. And I have learned and experienced and witnessed so much. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Okay. The history aside, what is happening now? I think I finally hit my stride here. Y'all, I've been, been struggling to get this video started for like an hour because I'm like, where, how do I even talk about this? It's such a big conversation, but I think, I think we're, we're onto something. I'm just going to powder my face. This is the Dermablend Loose Setting Powder. Powder under my eyes with the butt of the sponge just to make sure it's real smooth down there. And then I'll use my powder brush everywhere else. Do you see this highlight though? Elf Cosmetics has some super incredible stuff and for such a good price point. And it's cruelty free. Hello, and vegan. Even the mattifying powder doesn't take that shine down. The base is on y'all. Let's talk about gaming. So around a couple months after I got onto Twitch really actively, I was contacted by this incredible woman named Jill. And Jill is the CEO of Paydia Gaming, which is my day job. Originally she contacted me. She was like, you're doing some really cool stuff with social media. You know, you know what's up, what's going on with, you know, gaming. Like we really like your style. We want to have you consult on this project that we're building. And I was like, that sounds cool. I felt like something about that was right. I had done some gaming stuff in the past with social media. Like I participated in a Gears of War live stream for the Gears 5 launch, I believe. That was really cool. But like, I'd never really heard from a woman in the gaming space that reached out to me directly with such a specific ask. So I was like, ooh, this is interesting. So I came in, I did a bunch of consulting for a number of months. I ended up wanting to go on full time and they were like, hell yeah, let's go. So I did, and that was a great decision. I fell right where I wanted to be. I always wanted to be in the gaming industry. As a kid, that's what I wanted to do. But when I was a queer person in high school, seeing all of this hatred, the culture around gaming was so, anti-queer and anti-woman. And like, I'm just being direct and straight about that. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it was. And companies were doing very, very little at that time to offset that problem. So when she reached out and then this, this whole opportunity blossomed, it was amazing. Cause I was finally in this industry that I'd wanted for so long, but I had resigned myself at a certain point to say like, okay, another life. Like I missed out on it. It's not gonna happen for me. I'm not gonna get into gaming. As a professional, I'm just going to do beauty and stuff and I'll enjoy gaming when I can. That was not true. That was not true for me. And I didn't realize how I could grab the beast by the horns and I could make it be what I wanted it to be. My life could be what I wanted it to be. And I owe it to the incredible women like Jill who have seen potential and opportunity with me and brought me in, you know, into the fold. Like that is irreplaceable and incredible. And I'm so grateful for that. So now in my position, I try to do the same thing for others as much as I can. And I'm, I'm lucky that in my professional career, I used two products without telling you what they were. The products I just used, by the way, are the Fenty Beauty Instant Warmth Bronzer in Private Island. And this is a CoverGirl True Blend blush, actually, in So Flushed. Oh, the shade is Love Me. Cute. It's just a, a, a golden pink blush with my bronzer. And uh, we're going to start on the eyes with a primer. This is the NYX eyelid primer. Let's see what we can do for colors here. My professional experience in the gaming industry with my direct experience has been great but that's because I'm on a literally 100% woman team with queer women, with diverse women from different backgrounds. And the people that we interact with are often women in other companies. Like if we're doing partnerships with say, like for example, Padia, we have a partnership with Elf Cosmetics, which is great. And I've learned a lot about their products. They're not sponsoring this video. They work with Padia, not me personally. Even working with them, like there's gamers on their team. We chat beauty, we chat gaming. It's great. When women in the space and queer people, when, when you get together and you interact, it's so welcoming. It's so good. It's so healthy. It's so beautiful. But then when you bring into the picture, the public culture of gaming, things get dicey. And we've seen this most recently, unfortunately, on Twitter with some very questionable statements from some very high uh, profile Call of Duty players. If you are new to the world of gaming or you're unfamiliar with it, Call of Duty is a legendary franchise that has unfortunately one of the most toxic communities out there. And I don't say that lightly. 
I know that by saying that I'm opening myself up to harassment from that community because they will insist with every bone in their body that it's not and that actually we're the problem. Women and queer people are the problem because, you know, if you don't want to hear misogynistic jokes, attacks to your personal safety, threats, then, you know, you shouldn't be playing games, which is so wrong, so untrue. Is that what gaming is for you? It shouldn't be. I'm not gonna go into detail about who this person is because I don't wanna give them any more traffic than they've already got. But basically, y'all might have been seeing recently there's a lot of fire out there when it comes to queer people existing in public. A lot of phrases thrown around like groomer, uh, which is rhetoric from the 1980s, by the way. This is not new. It went away for 30 years and it came back. And it's, it's never been true. I grew up seeing no queer people. I'm still queer. I grew up not knowing trans people existed. I was still trans. Knowing that trans people existed would have only made me a healthier, happier, more successful person. That's it. This high profile Call of Duty streamer saw a video of a white supremacist, and this is not speculation, this is a fact, physically attacking the parent of a queer child at a school rally, basically to support the fact that they were doing a pride event at this school. Concerned parents were up in arms about children knowing that queer people existed. That's such an affront, that's so offensive. This high profile Call of Duty streamer and player says something to the effect of, you know, they should leave the kids alone. But he saw no problem with the fact that this white supremacist physically attacked somebody's parent, like a person, another person. Activision Blizzard removed his player skin that, that players could earn from the store in Call of Duty. And it has created this massive fuss online about like, you know, freedom of speech and like, this is the thing is like, you know, I'm contrasting this with my personal experience being surrounded by women in this industry, women and queer people, which is, so positive. And I look out into the internet and I follow so many different game developers and streamers and things from, you know, communities of women and queer people. And they're all having a freaking blast. And every time I see this supposed, you know, tough guy, cishet man community, they are screaming. They are angry. They are frustrated. They're unhappy, they're complaining every time, every single time. And that can get really loud. Not only, you know, from a personal attacks perspective, like I don't want to be insulted anymore. I don't want people attacking me. I don't want to hear slurs, but also from like an enjoyment perspective. If all you hear all the time are people complaining about a game you like, you're gonna start to feel that way. That's not helpful. That's not fun. And games are supposed to be fun. I'm starting my eyes. I want to tell you about it. This is the Elf Cosmetics Game Up palette. This was limited edition. It's no longer available, but it has some great shades to match for my nails. So I'm using the matte orange. I've carved out sort of a shape here into the crease. Then I went into the shimmery orange here and I applied that really directly on my eyelid. And I'm going to bring that orange now into the back to create sort of a soft winged effect. Side note, this orange is going to look really good on my blue eyes. Ooh, we love color theory in this house. Now, I don't want to get too lost in the sauce with this with this Call of Duty business, because quite frankly, it's not important. In the grand scheme of things, it's not important. What is important is that Call of Duty responded appropriately and removed the player's skin from the store, and they are taking the right stance. But what is not surprising to me is that people are surprised that this happened. And I've even spoken to people that aren't queer, just women that are Call of Duty fans that are like, why are people surprised? that this hateful rhetoric is so prevalent. Like this has been, this has been happening. This has been endorsed. This has been allowed. And it's not just within say the last 10 years. This is from inception in the West of video game marketing. It has been male skewed. Let's actually talk about that because I have receipts. Way, way, way back in the 80s, the 1980s, Nintendo decided they were gonna come to the West. They were very successful in Japan and they were like, hmm, what's going on over there? Let's, let's, Let's take some notes. And when they brought the consoles over, there was something very interesting happening and that was Reaganomics, okay? So suddenly corporations could market to children. How exciting. And children were buying from aisles in stores that were separated by gender. You have the boy toys and you have the girl toys. Suddenly the Super Nintendo console or whichever console isn't being bought out of the electronics section. It's now in the boys section because they had to choose one. For some reason, they had to choose one. They couldn't put it in electronics. They couldn't put it in both. So they chose the boys section. And in order to make this a successful economic expense to come over to the West, they had to make their marketing conducive to the idea of a boys section. 
in the store. So what did they do? They only depicted boys in most of the ads. If there was women in some of these ads, you know, they weren't necessarily there to look cool or to be playing the game. And this wasn't always this way. Like when we go back to the arcade era, like Pac-Man had a majority female audience. Women loved video games and they were very interested in it. Like it was never a problem. But when it became a problem was with Reaganomics, TV ads, marketing around consoles and things like that. And I'll be honest, I think the people that did it the worst was old school Sony. They had some really gnarly ads out there that were just outright misogynistic. Painting gaming as a boys club, women not allowed, women are annoying. The girlfriend's banging on the door trying to get your attention, but you're playing Tomb Raider because Lara Croft is hot and she has bigger breasts. Come on, man. This was on TV being marketed to children. And we're talking about trans people being groomers? That's what we're talking about? Okay. 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 Little break from the seriousness. I've blended this out with some yellow eyeshadow in the crease. Love the color. I'm going to pair it down a little bit with a skin tone shade. From my Too Faced Born This Way, the Natural Nudes palette. This is the color Swan. It's very close to my skin tone. I'm just going to place that above the crease so that I can blend out my orange and my yellow really nicely. So we trace this back to modern day, right? We have all this marketing back in the 80s and it works and it sells and it sells and it sells and it sells. So we keep on going more and more and more and more into this boy heavy, no girls allowed club because that is working, it's working. But this is why we look at modern day and we see actually statistically women make up pretty much half, it fluctuates. Sometimes it's just below half, sometimes it's actually just above half of gamers. And it used to be something, you know, where people would look at that and they would say, well, actually, that's because women are playing Candy Crush. But recently we look at new stats coming out and it's actually something more like the majority of Switch owners are women and the majority, something like 45% to 50%, somewhere between 40 and 50% of console owners for Xbox and PlayStation are women. So no, these are not Candy Crush players. No, they're not. They're playing the same games as men. Queer people are playing the same games as straight cishet people. There's no divide here in interest. The interest and the skill is the same. And let's talk about the skill, actually. When it comes to esports, and my goodness, y'all, esports has been a ride. I never really paid esports too much mind until I got involved with Padia. And Padia is primarily a tournament platform, which is, of course, great for competitive titles. And esports are competitive. So, you know, these are things like FPS esports, like Halo, um, Valorant, Apex Legends. We've got also, you know, we also have things like chess. FGC, like fighting games are really big on, on Padia as well. But these are competitive versus PvP games. And some rhetoric that gets thrown around sometimes is that like women are biologically unable to compete with men, with esports. Almost like, like we can talk about the realities of like physicality when it comes to physical sports that's complicated and nuanced and there is something to it. However, when we get into video games, what are you trying to tell me? That your testosterone makes you better at hitting buttons and clicking on the mouse and navigating like your what your your hand-eye coordination is better because because you've got high testosterone levels? What is this about? And when we actually look at science behind this, it it doesn't hold up. It does not hold up that women are in any way disadvantaged against men in competitive environments. What has created a disadvantage is the culture around it because you have women showing up at competitive events, getting sexually harassed, sexually abused, bullied out of these spaces. Why would I wanna show up to a place that's gonna treat me like garbage? And that's the whole ethos behind Padia is like, this is a problem. Let's do something about it. Women are in the space. They're not being talked to. They're not being acknowledged. And it's not just women, it's people of any marginalized background. Queer gamers, black gamers, disabled gamers, everybody is kind of getting the short end of the stick here. And every time anybody makes a move to try to make the space more equitable, you have snowflakes screaming. And then they'll turn around and talk about how snowflakey we are for wanting, for wanting to be acknowledged. But the second we're acknowledged, hellfire. Who is, who is the fragile one here? I just did my eyebrows, by the way, with my NYX micro brow pencil in brunette. Love this thing. I like the retractable uh, twist up applicator and it's very thin and it creates nice fine lines. And now I'm just tight lining my eye with a black pencil liner. Let's pull it back here though, because I don't want to get too lost in complaining about these people. I want to talk about what makes the gaming industry great and what makes women and queer people in the gaming industry great. People of any marginalized background in the gaming industry great. There are so many amazing game devs, content creators, creators, streamers, even esports professionals like Cuddlecore, oh my god, I love her, that make waves in the industry every day 
for people like themselves. And that is incredibly important. I want to acknowledge and highlight that. So you're going to see some links in the description to different kinds of professionals and creators and cool people in the industry that come from different backgrounds. And I want you to give those people a follow if you're interested in learning more about the gaming world. And if you have any kind of misconception about the gaming world being dominated by men or being for men, I want you to take a look at those people. And I want you to like take that in because there are so many incredible, incredible people in the industry putting in the time and effort to make things better every single day. And those people deserve to be acknowledged. And I even see, you know, allies going out of their way to call out bullshit and to make this space feel safer for people. And one person in particular, just off the top of my head, there's so many wonderful people, is this amazing, amazing, amazing esports host and general gaming professional, Marissa Roberto. And I originally met Marissa back on set for the Gears of War 5 launch live stream for Xbox. This was my first foray into professional gaming spaces. I was incredibly nervous. I thought that I didn't deserve to be there. I thought that I didn't belong there as a woman, as a queer person, as a trans person. And the entire time between scenes, between takes, between live sessions, I was speaking about myself in such a self-deprecating way. It was really, really unfortunate, honestly. And I wish I could go back and do a, a different job, but I did, you know, the best that I could at the time. And Marissa was nothing but supportive and helpful. And I've seen her again throughout the years at different events. She is such a wonderful, genuine person. She's so kind. But on Twitter, she spares no time in calling out BS. And she specifically will call out BS against trans people. And I have to be honest, like when I see things like that, that really means a lot to me. And, and I hope people know that. Like as an ally, when you speak up in defense of marginalized communities, it means so much. That is what we need. We need to feel safe with our colleagues, with our peers, with other people in the space. By the way, I'm doing my eyeliner. This is another limited edition, no longer available product. It is the Elf Cosmetics Eye Win Eyeliner Pot. This is a bright blue shade and I adore it. I'm just doing a pretty simple and tight blue eyeliner here on a small brush. But there are lots of folks like Marissa in the industry every day standing up for their peers of different backgrounds. And those people deserve acknowledgement. So if you're out here in this space and you see that happening, call it out, you know, on a, on a positive way. Say like, thank you. I see you. I appreciate this. Thank you. Let's talk about representation. Let's get a little more focused here. Recently, we had something called Summer Games Fest. And this included presentations from all kinds of major, major gaming uh, orgs and, you know, developers, publishers, especially things like Xbox, Sony, Ubisoft, etc. And there was a specific show at the very beginning, I think it was the actual Summer Games Fest launch, where every single person on stage was a man. Every single one. Every single product that they were showing, every single product coming out of any dev studio, hopefully... <laughs> has been touched by women, has had women on the dev team. And, you know, I'll be honest, yes, there are games that have no women on the dev team. And I'll be honest, additionally, you can tell. You can tell when there's no women on the dev team or if there are and they're not listened to at all, okay? And for there to be no women on stage in a multiple hour presentation from multiple publishers, multiple, st multiple studios is unacceptable at this point. It's unacceptable. It perpetuates this idea and this notion that women aren't part of the industry, that they're not here, that they're not interested. When there are women in every single one of these places doing important work, just like these other men in the industry, but the men are given these opportunities to present. And I don't think that this is always done out of malice. I've organized events. I know it can be really hard. It's also extremely important. So Summer Games Fest launches with this all male cast on stage. A couple days later, Xbox does their show. And within nine minutes, they had more women on stage than the original presentation. And all it took to exceed the number of women in the first presentation was one. But there wasn't just one woman. There was many throughout the showcase, different types of women in different roles, different presentations. It was perfect. Xbox nails it every time. And it's no surprise to me that they would also do something like a nail polish collaboration, okay? Which is the whole point here. The whole point here is visibility of women and queer people in the gaming industry and making a controller based off of limited edition nail polishes that you design in collaboration with a nail polish company is representation, is visibility for women and queer people in gaming. That's not being sold to Nick Merckx, okay? An unfortunate acceleration to this, this concept of, you know, there's no women on stage at these gaming presentations is, like I said, it 
perpetuates this myth that women aren't here when we are. And what that does is it creates a hostile environment. It creates a surprised reaction from people when we do appear. They don't know what to do. You know, it shouldn't be hard to figure it out what to do, but they don't know what to do. This results actually in a very widespread phenomenon where women just will not communicate online when they're gaming, which further reinforces the stereotype that we're not here. But I'll tell you, if I'm playing in a public lobby, I'm not turning on my mic. Absolutely not. A lot of men don't think twice about this. Some men with social anxiety do, certainly, but it's not a gendered issue for them. Whereas for women, we show up in a game, we're like, I need to turn off voice chat immediately. I cannot have proximity chat. I need to make sure my mic's off because I don't want to suddenly be harassed by somebody. I don't want to deal with it. There are women that do chat on public columns, yes, but then you get into situations where you're harassed and it can be anything from the most base juvenile stuff like, oh, you know, you belong in the kitchen, go to the kitchen, whatever which is like, why are you even saying that? It's so lame. Why are you wasting your breath? But it can get much worse than that. And I'm not gonna go into detail about that. We all know what that means, okay? And we don't deserve to be subjected to that when we're trying to relax and play a game. Why is all the energy in these lobbies so freaking angry? And when men say things like, that's just the way it is, no, it's not. That's the way you are. That's the way you are. And you need to confront that because you are making everybody else around you miserable. Why? Why are you so threatened by women being in your space? Why are you so threatened with women being interested in the same things you are? Why are you so threatened with the idea that women or queer people can be as good at a game as you? Why is that so alarming, so earth shattering? Why does that bother you so much? Because if it didn't bother you, you wouldn't be making these jokes about it. <sighs> okay, y'all, I've got, I've got the orange, I've got the gold, I've got the blue. I need to find a way to incorporate the green. So, let me think about this for a second. There's another game up, I win eyeliner pot in a bright green shade. What can I do with this? Ooh, I know. So let's name a few things that are happening in the gaming world that do spotlight or highlight or, you know, indicate a queer or women presence in the gaming world. Number one is of course this controller. I've talked about this a little bit already. I'm not gonna get into it right now. Uh, another example is actually Overwatch 2's in-game pride event. And I think this is the first event of its kind that I've ever seen in the gaming industry. If you're unaware, Overwatch is set on Earth. It's a sci-fi title, but it's set on Earth in cities like Toronto, for example. And on the maps that you actually play in, there are pride flags hanging. There is this presence of pride, of queerness, in the game world. It is fully acknowledged. It is fully recognizable. It is not a situation where it's just not mentioned because there's no homophobia in our world, so we don't even need to indicate if somebody's gay. It is fully on blast, okay? It is there. This was received a few ways. Number one, with positivity. Cool, great, this is great. Nice to see this, thank you, Blizzard. That's complicated, we'll talk about Blizzard later. There's another way this has been received, which is to shut it down and demonize it from like a social justice perspective, saying like, this was only done so that it could cover up other Blizzard scandals and other issues like Overwatch 2 canceling their PVE mode, which is bullshit. An event like an in-game pride activation takes so long to organize, to develop, to integrate, at least a year of planning. And it's really telling to me when people say, oh, this was just done to cover up something else. You have no idea how game development works. And I don't blame you for that, but please don't pretend to know. You cannot throw together an in-game pride event in a month. It's not gonna happen. Cause there's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of assets that need to be developed, reviewed, approved, revised, integrated, bug fixes. Like, listen, it's not as simple as just hit the gay button. Everything's gay now. And now nobody will notice our scandal. It's not like that. You know how this happens is queer developers in the company ask for it. They push for it. They demand it year after year after year. They say, this is a good idea, let's do this. They get told no, next year, this is a good idea, let's do this. They get told maybe, next year, this is a good idea, let's do this. Hmm, okay, this is not something that happens overnight. And it only happens because people within that company that belong to these marginalized communities make an effort to make it happen so that they can see themselves in their product and they can help other people feel seen in that game as well. So yes, the Overwatch 2 Pride event is a good thing. I love it. I'm very happy with it. I don't play Overwatch. I don't need to, to appreciate that, okay? That is not like swapping your logo on social media. I'm gonna use this Game Up eyeliner pot. It's like a neon green cream eyeliner to create these like extra wings in the back. And I'll see if I wanna add more after that. I'm also going to add a little bit of this green underneath of the blue in the front to highlight and contrast that wing, that sharpness. I think that's enough green, I'll be honest. I know it's not much, but I don't wanna get too carried away which I am totally in a state to do. 
and I'm trying to restrain myself, okay? I realize I'd like to balance it out a little bit, so I'm gonna take a little bit of that matte orange on a really soft blending brush and just kind of swipe it under my eye. And this is from that Game Up eyeshadow palette. That's nice, cute, nice. I've said a lot about the state of gaming when it comes to women and queer people and marginalized communities, how it feels to navigate that space. I've said good things about communities of women and queer people. I've shared my grievances about some of the exclusionary and ridiculous and silly things that can happen. But I wanna share the most important thing right now, okay? And that is play these games with your friends. If you're having a bad experience in public lobbies, that can often lead you to withdraw. And maybe you still play games, but you just don't talk to people. You want everything to be a solo experience. You can't stand the thought of joining a random group. It gives you anxiety. Okay, I've been there. All of these experiences that we have as marginalized people, they do not exist in a vacuum, nor do the actions of people that perpetrate them. So play with your friends and you will find things are much brighter. And you might be in a position like I was, honestly, two years ago, just before I started streaming, just after I started streaming, I did not want to make friends to game with. I thought that was risky, stressful, anxiety inducing, and therefore not worth it. It is worth it. And I wanna call out my friends, Claire, Doro. I'm getting emotional, y'all. Claire, Doro, Wes, Kaylin, Trayvon, all of y'all, are you're great. And I used to think like gaming was something I had to enjoy by myself because it was too dangerous to speak in a public lobby. It was too risky. I would be faced with harassment, with violence, with threats, with bullying. And I didn't want to deal with that. And that made me a very defensive, very closed off person, especially during the pandemic, when the only human interaction that I was getting was through video games and on the internet. I was a very closed off person. My partner Travis actually helped me a lot in putting myself out there opening myself up to people and making friendships. And I'm so grateful for that because it feels so much better to enjoy something you love with other people that enjoy it too. And you get to make great connections with people and form bonds. Like that's so meaningful, so important. And that's not something that, you know, not everybody gets that. And I know that. And I know that you might be watching this video like, well, I can't make friends. That's ridiculous. Yes, you can. You can. It's in your control. It really is. It might not feel like it is, but it is. And let me give you a little little tip here right now. I have a Discord community. My Twitch stream, The Campfire. The Discord community is called The Campfire. We are an inclusive group. We're friendly. We're welcoming. We're majority queer or women. Not entirely. So if you're a cishead person, you're welcome to join us, okay? The Campfire is for everybody to come and to sit around it, okay? And we have specific text channels dedicated to looking for people to game with. And it can even start, you know, maybe you just want to come hang out in the Twitch stream which I've resumed doing, by the way, on sort of an event basis. You can find information on my Instagram stories or in the Discord, for sure. The Discord's where you want to look. It might start with just coming to the Twitch streams and chatting, you know, interacting in the chat. People will interact with you. They'll reach out to you. They'll say hi. Put yourself out there, okay? I, it is my dream right now to revitalize that Discord community along with my Twitch stream that I'm working on and make it a space where people women, queer people, people from marginalized backgrounds or not can come together and make friends feel safe, feel supported. I want to be very careful not to create a space where, you know, it is so safe that we can't even like breach certain topics, so safe that we have to avoid certain things. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually self-efficacy. This is something I'm really into lately in therapy. <laughs> and it is this concept that you face a challenge, let's say making friends, socializing, and it feels so overwhelmingly impossible, but you can practice at it. And maybe the first time you stumble, the second time you stumble less. And slowly but surely, as you do this thing, it will get easier. It feels at first like maybe it won't, but it will. And that tells you, yay, okay, hey, I, this can get easier. I can play Sea of Thieves without having an anxiety attack. I can learn to aim better in an FPS without becoming overwhelmed or feeling like I'm holding my team back. I can practice. And it goes from, I can't do this to, I can figure this out. And gaming is a tool for that for everybody. And it is not okay with me for certain communities to not have access to that. For women and queer people to be told, no, you can't, you can't do this. You can't experience these amazing works of art, the amazing community, the athleticism in gaming. You can't do that. That's not for you. Yes, it is. Get your hands off my controller. Through opening myself up to friendships in gaming, I went from anxiety attacks and FPS 
to getting first place on the leaderboard out of 128 people pretty often. It is doable. And it's not doable just to prove a point like, yes, I can beat you. I beat you at COD or, you know, a woman's beating you at whatever FPS. It's not about that. It's about how it makes you feel, how you can compete with yourself to improve, to learn, to grow, to practice. That is something I did not have access to. Being barred from sports as a young queer person, being barred from a lot of social stuff as a young queer person, moving into adulthood, still feeling like I couldn't participate in those things. And it took an ally, my partner, to break that wall down for me. And it took a long time and to, for me to realize I can do this. And that doesn't just affect gaming, you guys. That affects everything. It has made me into a more secure, stable, functional person in my daily life to practice getting better at an FPS and to overcome the anxiety that I carried around that for so long. It's not just about the game. And excluding women and queer people from games is also not just about the game. And that's, that's what this is all about. It's bigger than that. My mascara, by the way, was Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I love this thing. It's amazing. We're just about done. I just, I just need to do my lips. I'm going to keep it real simple today. I'm going to start by lining my lips. This is an Annabelle lip pencil in sort of a light pink shade. Just going to define the line in the middle. Do you still like me if I smiled like this? Then I'm going to really lightly apply. This is a House Labs Le Riot lip gloss but I'm gonna apply it more like a stain. And this is in the shade Blaze, I believe. And I'm topping that off with my NARS lip oil in, I think this is the shade Orgasm. Oh, only the most legendary lip product, lip cheek product of all time. Et voila, Gorge. And there we have it, a look inspired by the amazing Xbox OPI Summer 2023 collection collab with the nail polishes that match the controller. Isn't this thing gorgeous? Oh my goodness. I'm going to see if I can find a link to purchase this and or the nail polishes. I'll put that stuff in the description because I think this is really cool. If we can support stuff like this, it can show companies that we want more, that we are here and that we're worth investing in as an audience. So take a look if you're interested. I love the controllers. I love collecting controllers. I love limited edition controllers. This is one of my favorite and it is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Look at that cute. Oh, oh. Oh, it looks so good with the background. Ooh, we stand. Like I said earlier, if you're looking for a community to learn more about gaming, even if you're unsure that you even want to get into it in the first place, if you're just curious, check out the Campfire Discord and linked in the description as well below. It's also in my link tree. You can click on my link tree and there's a link there to join the Campfire Discord server. Come say hello, introduce yourself, get to know people. It is a really great community of really wonderful people that I've known for two and a half years over on Twitch. And there are some seriously lovely, wonderful, warm people there you will be welcome come hang out get to know some people make some friends and get in the game and enjoy yourself it does not have to be a frightening anxiety inducing experience and you do not have to deal with people telling you that you don't belong okay also it is worth me noting that i have resumed activities on twitch and what i'm doing is i am doing event-based streams now so instead of doing a regular schedule routine thing where i'm like every monday and friday for example instead of that i'm doing say oh this weekend i'm going to do diablo 4 and then we're going to watch the xbox games showcase together which which I did last weekend. That was amazing. It was such an awesome way to come back to Twitch. I had such a blast and the community was so cool. So thank you. Join me on Twitch again very soon. You can check my next stream on my Twitch page in the about section. There is a sort of countdown to my next stream. It shows my schedule and I'll be updating that regularly with the next show as soon as I know when it is. So you can, you can join us there and have a good time. And if you're interested in the more competitive side of gaming, I would recommend honestly that you check out paydiagaming.com. Again, we run tournaments there. Uh, there's lots of game guides, different things. And again, it's a friendly, warm, welcoming community of like-minded people in the gaming world that want to make it a kinder, more equitable, more approachable space for everyone. So check that out as well. All that said, thank you so much for joining me today. And I really hope that you saw some sincerity in what I had to say because I feel very passionately about this. I feel very passionately that gaming has a lot to offer people as far as self-efficacy, as far as wonder, as far as art, as far as skill, athleticism, coordination. Even, you know, as I age, I'm not talking about that really right now. I'm 27, but I mean, as I get older, as as I grow, I just, I want, I want that to be there for me for the rest of my life. And I think that has a lot of value. So until next time, just remember, gaming should be fun. Women and queer people and people of all marginalized backgrounds are welcome in gaming. And if you see somebody having an adverse reaction to the presence of a woman or a queer person, they are the problem, not you. Thank you so much. I will see you on Discord, on Twitch, and right here. And I post every day on Instagram, whether it's a story or a picture. So follow me in those places. You can find all those things in my link tree link down below. I will see you again very soon. Thank you and goodbye.